Welcome to another episode of YLG Canada Immigration Podcast, where all your immigration questions will be answered by an experienced immigration lawyer. My name is Ryan, and today we continue talking about the Startup Visa Program. All right, so um, I think everybody has a clear understanding of what it means by qualifying businesses. But you also mentioned letter of support. Um, so, and, and, and I know that you said we get it from designated organization, which we know what it is. But um, how do we get the letter of support? What does it take to get them? You must get a letter of support from them by applying. So you contact. Let's say you have everything ready first. Uh, so um, then there is a list of uh, designated organization. Each of these designated organizations are the hubs for something. IT mm -hmm. or artificial intelligence, biomedical or some other... Uh, like fields. Field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to find someone who fits your area of expertise. Interesting. Exactly. So then you contact and then the organization, those designated organization guide you how to fill up a form and, and it's kind of like an application form and then uh, to persuade them that you've got you've got this golden idea right yeah and mm -hmm. then if they like and they most probably ask you for a kind of interview uh, to pitch your idea and then after that if everything is good so they sign a contract with you they say okay this is uh, this is my obligation for example as a designated organization and this is your obligation as applicant then there is a requirement then there is a, any like any other agreement or any other contract there are terms and conditions and then mm -hmm. they sign and then they uh, after that, you can get the letter of support. Mm -hmm. The letter of support usually is, is, is not the letter because it's confusing. Sometimes it says, okay, you give me a letter. No, it's not the letter. It's this kind of the form. Okay. And then designated organization give it to you. And then meantime, send a commitment certificate to the immigration office. Okay. Along with your contract and the process. Because the immigration office asks them to do their due diligences <laughs> before accepting any uh, idea to support. What I can imagine is that the grueling part is persuading them to issue the letter of support and obviously submit a commitment certificate to IRCC. Then yeah. you as a lawyer, what is your role? How do you help someone like me persuade them that my business plan is what they really want to support? It's not a lawyer job, to be honest, but inside my firm, YLG, we have a research advisor and we have a industrial research advisor again, mm -hmm. and we have a patent lawyer. We check the idea and say, okay, this is the good idea and it can meet the Canadian standard. And then we work on it with client. Sometimes we hire professionals, like uh, third-party professionals, to kind of pamper the like uh, publish the it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Somehow, I mean, because because maybe your idea is good, but it's not the way you should present. To okay, anyone. so they actually make it more presentable. Yeah, and there are some other stuff like we can provide a service to client like making an intellectual property agreement or uh, filing a patent for the client in the US or in Canada and then uh, these are like a supporting uh, evidence the idea is good and then uh, help the client to apply but one more thing do not forget uh, you must present the idea okay not the lawyer Oh. Not anyone else, because I heard, for example, there are third company, they do everything A to Z, and then uh, they fabricate everything, which is not good. It's immigration fraud. 
Oh. You must do it by your own, by having a system, by having some advisors, but, but you must do it. At the end of the day, it's you presenting and trying to persuade the designated organization that your idea is worth investment. Am I right? Exactly. At the end, these designated organizations want to see you are the applicant and you are calling yourself for an entrepreneur. So to meet that definition means you are on top of your business, not someone else. You talked about designated organization. There are three of them, right? Venture capital, angel investor, and business incubators. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. All right. And um, as you said, there are certain differences. The first two, that is the venture capital and the angel investors, these are the money guys. These are the people who would actually invest in my business. Uh, somehow, yeah, but, but it's not just about the investment. They also support you. Okay. They support the idea. For the first two, you need a sizable investment from them, which is if the investments come from a venture capital fund, you must secure a minimum investment of 200000 and if it's come from the angel investors, the secure amount, the minimum investment is 75000 Noted. Thanks for that. By contrast, you don't need to secure a financial investment from a business incubators. But I guess it makes it more competitive, right? Uh, somehow, because as you recall, I said uh, the program uh, boosted in 2018 right the oh. reason is because of these incubators business incubators business incub because they don't provide you money so you can get more easily uh, the letter of support from them compared to uh, the venture capital and angel investors oh so it's exactly the opposite of what i had imagined yeah Obviously, it should be more difficult to persuade people to invest than to simply support you. <laughs> Definitely. You remember I say about the qualifying business? Yes. At the time you are applying, at the time you get the PR? Vividly. At that time, it says you need to run a business in Canada. Yeah. Right? Yes. Inside the running the business at that time is also about having at least 50% uh, of the equity of the business, a Canadian uh, corporation, which is in a Canadian corporation, if you recall, it has to be incorporated in Canada. So these investors, like uh, venture capital and angel investors, usually they took equity of the corporation, mm -hmm. the Canadian corporation. You are listening to YLG Podcast with Afshin Yazdani. Exploring the latest news, tips, and strategies about immigration to Canada. In terms of reviewing uh, the startup application, um, I can imagine that one body of organization would be IRCC. Is yes. there any other org organization that does that? There are two different uh, stages for startup visa application. One get letter of support from one of these designated organizations. Second, get the PR from uh, the immigration office, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine for the first stage, you can guess who should approve your business model, that the designated organization, right? Right. So they're going to review it. But the second, when when you when when they finish the whole thing, they send a, a commitment certificate to the immigration office. Then immigration office also doing its part. So I just want to simplify that for myself. Double review one is an expert in the field who would evaluate how promising the business is. And then this is somehow evaluated by, I don't know, government official to simply issue you 
a permanent resident. So that person would not most probably have information about your business, but they would just trust the judgment of the, the designated organization, right? There are like three uh, different stage of monitoring and a screening process. First a screening usually done by a designated organization who gives you the letter of support. The second part will be the officer inside the immigration office. And uh, last one, last screening is by an independent peer review process. It's not all the time, but sometime if they, there is kind of suspicious fishy situation, they send the documents and the whole thing, the process to be reviewed by these independent uh, peer review panels. And uh, the third criterion was language proficiency. Yes. As with all the other programs, I can imagine that you need to prove your language proficiency through one of these proficiency tests, like Salpip and IELTS, as I remember from the previous episode. Is there anything you want to talk about? Yeah. No, it's the same thing. Canadian language benchmark for this program is, is five. So you need to have a minimum Canadian language benchmark five, which is equal to IELTS five. And that's all I mean. But one more thing. All these requirements, all these eligibility criteria I listed for you, all members of the startup uh, business model must meet these requirements. All of them. Oh. Because sometimes, you know, I'm a leader. I am the essential person. And then the others are coming with me. So I'm going to run the whole thing. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Everybody in this program i mean if you apply for a pr all of them must meet the requirement and all of them must get ielts 5. okay and last but not least money how much money do i need to cover living expenses when i get to canada through this program well ryan bring enough money to settle means uh, because the government of canada doesn't give financial support to new startup visa immigrants so you must have your own money to support yourself and your uh, dependent after you arrive in canada and you cannot borrow this money from any other person that's something you need to understand and uh, how much money you need it depends on the size of your family for example, if yourself and your your wife is about uh, sixteen uh, thousand Canadian, pretty affordable. Like yeah, the program doesn't ask you to invest or anything. It's, it's about the, for the for the settlement. So let's say you you move to Canada and you are here and, and then there is no business and there is no production or anything yet. So how you can uh, take care of yourself? Okay. So it says, okay, you need to bring some money at least for a few months. To just pay the bills. Yeah, to the bill. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's not significant. A frequent question we received was regarding the length of time it takes for people to get in Canada once they start the process. And of course, people are concerned about money. That is how much it costs them for the whole process. About the processing time, uh, it's 12 months to 16 months. But please consider this. Yeah. If you are from a country, uh, you need to give a biometric with your application. So you need to add that time to the processing time. Is that a lengthy process? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because the thing is the 12 to 16 month processing time, it's a start from a completed application. I mean, the whole application submitted completely. Submitted, okay. So one of the requirements to consider as a complete submission is giving a biometric. For example, for Iranian, they must give biometric. And then as of now, in this situation, if they didn't give the biometric for any other reason, they must give it before they start, like the processing actually starts. Thanks for listening to another episode of Wild G Canada Immigration Podcast with Afshin Yazdani. You can get more information on immigration to Canada from ylgpc.ca. We're trying to make this show more interactive, so please feel free to send us your questions to podcast at ylgpc.ca. 
Take care. Take care.